who out there likes toy hunts. I do, I really do. Me too, hon. But only one thing can take the utter joy out of a toy hunt. Oh yeah? What's that? Well, Happy, it's not being able to find the figure that you're looking for. Man, that sucks! What? Tell me about it, Chris. I'll well, see, the thing is this. Actually, Chris, let me do the talking, okay? I am sorry. I got carried away. Let's just watch the video. Welcome to CKC, I'm Matt, and if you like Star Wars and Star Wars collecting, you're in the right place. Hit subscribe, like this video, and hold on to your butts. What's up everybody? I hope everyone's doing stellar. Today we're doing something that actually applies to happy hunting out there. As you might know, I'm a toy hunter. I'd much rather get out there and hit up a bunch of stores to find my figures. Back in the day, sometimes I'd even skip work or even school to go out there and check a bunch of Targets and Walmarts, endlessly searching for the newest figure, and hit up like six Targets and six Walmarts in a day, with some GameStops and other stores mixed in for good measure. Ah yes. Those were the good days. But recently, it barely seems worth it to get out there. Some figures are so impossible to find at brick and mortar that I'd rather just do it online. And that's where I do most of my action figure hunting, if you can call it that now, on the good old interwebs, with the canceled pre-orders, shipping disasters, and all that fun stuff that comes with buying your figures online. But today, we're looking at the top 10 Black Series figures that were the hardest to find in the wild. Be it artificial scarcity, just straight up stupidity on Hasbro's part, or a little bit of both, these were some of the hardest to find in the wild for me. Now, I can only speak for myself in my region of the country, but these are the ones that stick out in my memory as being a total pain in the keister to find. Also, one thing before we start, I'm planning on starting to do some live streams and possibly some memberships. That way I can converse with you guys a little bit more and get to know you guys a little bit better. If that interests you, please let me know in the comments. And if there's any perks for membership, because I'm really new to this, that you think are a good idea, then please let me know. But anyway, without further ado, here are the top 10 most difficult Black Series figures to find in the wild. But first, honorable mentions. Honorable. The Orange Line Black Series number six, Boba Fett. Wow. Now that is taking it back. How many of you were even collecting back then? Can you even remember back then? It seems like it was 1986, but it was really only just eight or nine years ago, back when the Black Series was still in its infancy and the line was still full of ambition and hope. Rebellions are built on hope. Well, your figure brought in the dark days of Black Series collecting there, Stardust. Collectors got their first taste of the Black Series 6-inch with the 2013 San Diego Comic-Con exclusive Boba Fett and Han and Carbonite set. Well, some people did. It was drastically under produced and sold out before the last day of the convention, leaving many collectors empty-handed and wanting more. Well, those collectors who actually accepted the Switch to 6-inch Star Wars figures at least. So Hasbro, with a very rare and out-of-character correct case assortment move, repacked the Boba Fett figure into the second wave of the Black Series 6-inch figures, which was accompanied by Slave Leia, Greedo, and Han Solo. Think about being back in 2013 and seeing a 6-inch Boba Fett figure for the first time. Your brain would probably melt. There wasn't like 12 Black Series Boba Fetts available like there is today. So Boba Fett flew off the shelves, but Slave Leia, Greedo, and Han were all peg warmers. Today they're worth significantly more, especially the Slave Leia, but back then you could find an entire peg full of Slave Leias. I figured that would be extremely popular if they repacked her into the archive line. And this overabundance of Slave Leias, Hans, and Greedos eventually led to the super rare and crazy expensive Black Series Mexican Walmart 4-pack, which is an entirely different story altogether. It's on the top 10 most expensive Black Series releases list, which is linked in the description in case you want to go check it out. And because of Boba Fett's demand, Boba Fett was again correctly repacked into Wave 4 because he was so popular. Definitely a great figure, and one of the only figures on this list that were hard to find because of popularity. Number 10, the Black Series number 13 General Hux, and number 14 X-Wing Pilot Asti. This might seem crazy to you, but there was a time when these two were impossible to find. So impossible, in fact, they were going for about 60 bucks each. I'm friggin' serious. Do you want me to explain it to you? Well, too bad, because I can't. I don't friggin' know. But during a time when all major characters got repacked in future waves multiple times, these two were never repacked, and there was only one of each per case, so that probably contributed to it. And both of them were all new figures that were actually pretty good for the time. General Hux had this removable full-length jacket shell cast in a soft, bendable plastic, and Asti actually had a better X-Wing body sculpt than Poe did, which might seem strange, except we're dealing with Hasbro, so I'm not surprised in the slightest. And the release of Asti also got my hopes up that maybe more background aliens were gonna get released in the Black Series. Because he got what? 
a total of negative three seconds of airtime, but here we are six or seven years later and I'm still waiting. More cases of their wave actually showed up months and months later, which dropped their price back down to what it actually should be. But during that five or six month period, these were impossible to find. And one last quick point, looking back at these Disney Star Wars Black Series releases, most of them were all new figures. Some of these waves were like four or five all new figures per wave. Now we're lucky if we get two new molds per year. They want us to throw them a damn parade every time there's an all new mold. So for all these Disney Star Wars Black Series figures that no one wanted, you massively overproduce them and you make them all new molds, most of which you can still buy for under retail seven years later. And now for figures that collectors actually want, a lot of them come out to be just completely inaccurate Frankensteins like Imperial Crosshair or Boss or name your figure here. Way to go, Hasbro. Number nine, the Target exclusive Carbonized Mando. Remember Force Fridays? They were fun, right? You remember Toys R Us midnight openings for Force Fridays? Remember driving around early Friday morning trying to find all the damn exclusives? Remember when Hasbro would release like four different exclusives at four different retailers all on the same Force Friday? Guaranteeing that you couldn't get them all because you can't be four places at 8 a.m.? Yeah, there hasn't been one of those in a while since there hasn't been a new Star Wars movie in the last few years. But the last Force Friday was especially nerve-wracking for a number of reasons. One of which was the release of these four carbonized Black Series figures. Amazon, Walmart, GameStop, and Target each got an exclusive. Exclusive, the most elusive of which was the Target exclusive Carbonized Mandalorian. Some of you have told me in the comments of other videos that these were plentiful in your area, but near me, they were ridiculously hard to find. I actually drove an hour and a half to finally get mine. I think I summed up the situation pretty well in one of my earlier videos. Leave it to Hasbro to massively overproduce Ray, Finn, and Jin on their Force Fridays to the point where if you offered me one for free, I wouldn't take it. But for something like this that everybody wants, what do you think? You think two per store will be enough? No, no, no. How about two per target? Oh, that's a great idea. So these were going for about 90 bucks when they first came out. There was a second release in stores, which was equally as difficult to find, but they've been available online a few times since then. So they're relatively cheap now, but they're on par with the first edition Mandalorian at one point. Number eight, the Black Series number 28, Scarif Stormtrooper Squad Leader. I have never seen this figure at brick and mortar. Ever. Which is mostly because he's another victim of Hasbro's excellent case assortment and repacking decisions, which may or may not be a recurring issue among the figures on this list. Now, the Shore Trooper design was originally called the Scarif Trooper. However, the think tank at Lucasfilm and Disney must have realized after the fact that naming this trooper design the Scarif Trooper would severely limit its usability throughout the Star Wars universe, considering the fact that the base on Scarif friggin' blows up along with a significant portion of the planet at the end of Rogue One. But if I was gonna sit here and go over all the missteps by Disney, Lucasfilm, and Hasbro. By the time I was finished, I'd be eligible for an AARP card. So let's just move on. However, I will forever refer to the Shore Trooper as the Scarif Trooper, and no one can stop me. Now, the Scarif Trooper squad leader, not to be confused with the Walmart exclusive regular Scarif Trooper, which I easily found at retail and which has been repacked into the archive line, was in Wave 8 of the Red Line. Guess who else was in Wave 8? That's right, the ever-elusive Jin, Cassian, and the Death Trooper, a trio that I'll now refer to as the Axis of Evil. Now guess who was in Wave 7? That's right, the Axis of Evil, Jin, Cassian, and the Death Trooper. Wave 7 was the Rogue One Force Friday wave, and because The Force Awakens Force Friday was so successful, being the first new Star Wars movie in over 30 years, the figures for the next Force Friday, which was Rogue One, were what? If you watch this channel, you should know this, massively overproduced. That's right. Good job, everybody. So not only was there already an overabundance of Jin's Cassians and the Death Trooper, because they were massively overproduced for Force Friday, they repacked them all in the next wave. And because some of the figures in Wave 8 were already peg-warming, a lot of retailers never even put out cases of Wave 8. And where did all these Wave 8 cases end up? Five Below and Ollie's for five bucks. Director Krennic, who was also in Wave 8, was a staple at Five Below for years after he came out. And the Scarif Squad Leader was one per case and was never repacked. With Jin, Cassian, and the rest of the Axis of Evil, along with Rey, were all repacked three or four times. And it wasn't until there was an influx of them all of a sudden, two years later, at discount stores and on Amazon, that I finally got one. It arrived smashed in an Amazon padded mailer, but what else would you expect? And this one per case, never repack situation is even stranger, considering this was the new trooper design for the new movie. Generally, they try to shove those down our throats, but in this case, you couldn't even find them if you wanted them. Number seven, 
the Target exclusive Black Series Clone Wars Echo and the other Clone Wars figures. Hasbro, let me lay down a general rule for the future Black Series and TVC releases, which I would assume would be common sense at this point, but apparently has narrowly escaped the Cracker Jack marketing team over at Hasbro. If the figure release is either Boba Fett or from Clone Wars, don't make it an exclusive. I understand exclusives have to exist, we can't escape them, and unfortunately, in my opinion, they will ultimately spark the downfall of this hobby, something I may speak on in a future vid. But can we please just use a little bit more common sense when selecting which figure is going to be an exclusive? You're only feeding the scalpers when you do this. Anyway, Hasbro actually came up with a great idea and released four Black Series Clone Wars figures in the 3.75 inch Clone Wars packaging from back when the Legacy Collection was hitting retail. But it's one step forward and two steps back, as this good idea was followed by not only the horrible idea to make them a store exclusive, in this case Target, but also that there was four of them to chase down instead of just one, which is the usual case for an exclusive. And not only that, there were no pre-orders, which could be the most incredibly insane thing that has ever happened on planet earth so tracking down these figures was a real pain in the ass and even if you found a store that had them or at least one of them since they were shipped individually in cases of six some target super employees would not let you buy them despite the figures not being register locked because the figures were supposed to be on some end cap planogram for father's day of last year and where was that father's day end cap supposed to be well in the best place to sell action figures in the whole store the men's clothing section. Because when I go on a toy hunt, I always think to myself, well, they didn't have the new figures in the toy aisle. Better check the men's clothing section. But if you couldn't track them down in stores, they were also available online for about two full seconds at a time. Cases of six of each figure were added online one case at a time. So if you set your in-stock alert for each figure, you had about one second, and that is not an exaggeration, to add the figure to cart and pay for it before it was out of stock. A situation that still occurs with Target exclusive Black Series figures to this day. Hey Target, maybe you could put the figures online in bunches instead of one case every hour or so. Seems to make more sense, right? I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud. Anyway, what's next? Oh, what do you know? Number 6. The Walmart Exclusive Clone Wars Black Series Figures Another blatant violation of the Star Wars action figure exclusive rule I just coined above, these Black Series Clone Wars figures were even harder to find than the Target ones. But this lineup of figures was pretty badass, including a Season 7 Ahsoka, an Ahsoka Clone Trooper, and a Mando Loyalist, who at the very least was great for customization. But one thing that these Clone Wars releases had that the Target releases did not have were pre-orders. All of them were available for pre-order during one of Walmart's collector cons last year, but if you weren't able to get your pre-order in, then they were a serious pain in the tuchus to try and find in store. And even if you were able to track these bad boys down using the inventory checkers, it was a race against the scalpers to get them because they were all going for buku bucks on the secondary market. And for some Walmarts, it was another planogram display situation, as even if you found a store that had them, they might not sell them to you because the figures were supposed to be part of some display. I mean, we've all been there. The inventory checker tells you that some local stores have the figures. You drive to several stores, but they don't have them. Now you're on your third or fourth Walmart. You're an hour away from your house, and the employee says that yes, they have them, but they will not sell them to you for whatever reason. It's part of a display. It's not the release date yet. The manager said no, blah, blah, blah. Now all of these excuses seem pretty weak, but still could be possibly legit. But most of the time, I think these phrases are actually code for, I don't feel like going in the back and looking for them. You stupid man, baby. What always confused me with the whole they're part of a display or end cap promotion excuse is this. What is the point of the display? So people buy the product, right? Well, I'm right here to buy the friggin' product. What's the difference between you selling it three days from now when you're supposed to put out the display and me buying it right now? The price is the same either way. I can guarantee the person who buys it three days from now when you put out the display didn't put in all the work I did trying to find them. Dude just walked by the display and he's like, oh, the $60 Ahsoka exclusive. How lucky I am to find this. While just randomly walking by after picking up dryer sheets or whatever mundane product I came into Walmart for today. So that's who should get the figure? Dryer sheets guy? After all the effort I put in trying to track down the figure, lazy dryer sheets guy who just got lucky should get it. Come on. Anyway, there might have been one in-store restock if I can remember correctly, but if you didn't score them online, then you were pretty much screwed with these. And even if you got them online, you weren't guaranteed anything. I mean, we've all had our experiences with Walmart pre-orders being canceled and shipping, right? Number five the Walgreens-exclusive Black Series Clone Commander Obi-Wan. 
Another violation of the newly legislated Star Wars the action figure exclusive rule. I never saw this one at retail either. I know other people have told me that they easily found this figure in their area, but I never saw it. And just like all of the other Hasbro Walgreens exclusives, there were no pre-orders. So you just had to get out there and find it, but I never did. However, for some, not all, but for some of the time during Commander Obi-Wan's release, there was a placeholder listing on Walgreens.com. He wasn't in stock, but there was a listing for him just the same. And under the listing was a locate in store option, which would show you which local store had the figure in stock. Easy peasy, right? Nope, because when you got to that store, you realized that it wasn't the Obi-Wan exclusive that the website was locating, but Black Series figures in general. Many gins and fins were seen on that day, I can tell you. But also, just like most previous Hasbro Walgreens exclusives, Clone Commander Obi-Wan popped up as in stock on the Walgreens website for $11.99. I'm not kidding, it was $11.99. And more than once, by the way. Several times during his release, he popped up for $11.99 on the website. I ordered two, and guess what? They both arrived damaged. So, because he was out of stock online by the time they arrived, I called customer service to see if we could work out this dilemma. The employee asked if I'd be willing to exchange the two damaged ones in store, and I said, yes, of course, if I could find a store within driving distance that had them in stock. She then told me, well, you're in luck. The Walgreens near you has them in stock. In fact, they are in stock at multiple Walgreens stores near you. So I said, oh, that's great. How do you know that? And she replied, because the locate in store option on the Walgreens.com listing says the figure is in stock at all the stores around you. So needless to say, I ended up keeping the damaged ones. Number four, the GameStop exclusive Black Series Purge Trooper. This was a disaster from the very beginning. This could have been the most confusing Black Series release of all time. Listen to this complete cluster muck of tomfoolery. So first, the figure was revealed, but of course there would be no pre-orders, because that would be too easy. Then the GameStop exclusive Jedi Fallen Order bundle was announced, which included the game and a mystery Black Series figure. Collectors, being the sneaky smart group that we are, assumed the mystery figure would be the Purge Trooper, considering that it was going to be a GameStop exclusive, and is from the Jedi Fallen Order game. However, rumors swirled either way. Then the Purge Trooper was included in the press release for the Star Wars figure releases for the upcoming Force Friday, which gave people hope that yes, we'd be able to buy the Purge Trooper individually and not just in the bundle, a hope that was quickly stripped away from us when not a single one showed up in stores for Force Friday. And after the unrivaled welcoming reception from collectors for the Target exclusive collector's mystery box, which contained a mystery Black Series figure, which was released on that same Force Friday, expectations were were not high to say the least. Then we were told that yes, the Purge Trooper would be part of the JFO bundle, but you could only get the Purge Trooper by pre-ordering said bundle. Then GameStop was telling people that you could only buy the Purge Trooper individually if someone who pre-ordered the bundle didn't pick up their Purge Trooper. But then GameStop started getting extra Purge Troopers and had it advertised individually for sale in their flyer. They seem to have received very few of them, but you could still track one down if you tried. I've never called so many GameStops in my entire life, and at this point, they were going for around 100 bucks on eBay. They were eventually released online on two separate occasions with pre-orders, which has dropped its secondary market price to about 35 bucks. But it was a real roller coaster ride for those few months. Number three, the Black Series Bayes Malbus and Chirrut Imwe. Back in the dark days of Black Series collecting, and those of us who made it out alive have some stories to tell. The release of a new figure that you actually wanted was few and far between. Even to this day, full pegs of busted up gins and Cassians for 1812 or 982 still haunt my dreams. Stories of gins and Cassians existence in the wild still exist, but the figures seem to be much more elusive nowadays, generally only being spotted in Walgreens stores in rural areas, most of the time accompanied by the busted up fin. But during this time, Bayes and Chirrut had some buzz around them, but could you find them in a store? Absolutely not. I actually never saw them in the wild, and I was out there pretty often back then. And this is because Bayes and Chirrut were the only two new figures in Wave 10. The other four figures in the wave were all repacks. And who were they? They were Director Krennic and the Axis of Evil itself, Jin, Cassian, and the Death Trooper. This was the second time the Axis of Evil had been repacked in the last three waves. They were originally released in Wave 7, repacked in Wave 8, then repacked again in Wave 10. So they were released three times in the last four waves. So by the time Wave 10 came, the pegs at most retailers were already jam-packed with the other figures in this wave. So a lot of Wave 10 cases never got put out on the sales floor. And where did they end up? Five below and ollies for five bucks. Nice. Number two, the Black Series Captain Rex. 
Why does Hasbro always do Captain Rex dirty? From this figure's screwed up release to re-releasing the subpar Black Series 3.75 inch Rex as the TVC Rex to making both the Black Series Bad Batch Rex and the TVC Bad Batch Rex both exclusives. It really doesn't feel like they give the most popular clone trooper of all time the respect he deserves. In fact, I'm revising the exclusive rule right now. If it's a Clone Wars, Boba Fett, or Captain Rex release, don't make it an exclusive. But the same thing that happened to Baze and Shirook happened to Captain Rex. Sandwiched in between a seemingly endless stream of Disney Star Wars peg warmers, Rex was released in a wave with only two other new figures. The other five figures in his wave were all repacks. And the two other new figures, Island Journey Ray and DJ, peg warmers in their own right. So not only could Hasbro not even sacrifice one of the five repack slots in the case to double up the most popular clone trooper of all time in his own wave, they basically just threw him into a repack wave. And because every store's pegs were stockpiled with the mountainous stacks of Rogue One, The Last Jedi, and Solo peg warmers, combined with the fact that most of Rex's wave contained figures that were already on the shelf, many of Rex's wave never got put on the floor by retailers. I know I never found one. And where do they all end up? Five below an Ollie's for five bucks. And Ross for $2.99. And after all of this, not one time did Hasbro think to repack the most popular clone trooper ever due to this situation. But all of these figures were repacked after Rex's release. Good thing they got all these peg warmers back on the shelves instead of the most popular clone trooper of all time. A list of repacks that, yes, you guessed it, includes the other two new figures in Rex's wave, Island Journey Ray and DJ. So you repacked Island Journey Ray and DJ and not Captain Rex. You can't make this stuff up. And finally, instead of adding Captain Rex to an archive wave, which I think every collector would have been in favor of, Hasbro decided to re-release the Redline Captain Rex, just like they did with the Commander Wolf release the year before. Online toy retailers started taking some soon-to-be-canceled pre-orders for the Rex release, which quickly sold out, first with a release date of August 2021, then November 2021, which to this day have yet to be shipped. Meanwhile, the Black Series Archive Hoth, Luke, and Han, Scarif Trooper, and the Hover Tank Driver are all selling for under retail, the Black Series Archive A New Hope Leia is peg warming, and the newest Archive Wave, which is up for pre-order now, includes Skiff Disguise Lando, whose original Black Series release will still only cost you 20 bucks, and C-3PO. But who knows, maybe one day those Rexes will ship. However, maybe releasing him in the Archive line, instead of just one of the figures I just mentioned, would have been the right move. Number 1. The First Edition Mandalorian. Holy Toledo, do I hate this figure. But yes, you're right, it's pretty much only a jealous rage against those who have it. I never found this figure, and to this day, I don't think I've ever seen it in person. But man, the lead up to this release and the release itself on Force Friday was such a disaster. If they just gave us a little bit more information at the time, my level of hatred would probably be to a lesser extent. The first edition wave was part of the Triple Force Friday release for the Rise of Skywalker, but information about it leading up to their release was vague and sometimes contradictory. Predicting. First, a picture or two leaked from overseas of one of them and then another. This was only like a month before Triple Force Friday. Up until then, we had no idea that these were coming, and Hasbro hadn't said anything about them. And no one knew it was an entire wave of figures and not just one or two in white boxes until a case of them was found at Target in California, and this was just two weeks before Force Friday. And we still hadn't received any info about them from Hasbro. Were they going to be available for Force Friday? If so, where? Just Target? We had no idea. Then Hasbro had scheduled a live stream about all the toys that were going to be available for Forest Friday. Finally, we'll get some answers, right? Wrong. Basically, it was just one actor after another that was in the Rise of Skywalker holding up a toy or a figure or a Lego set and going, wow, wow. Wow. We received no info about the figures or anything that was remotely useful besides audio of Daisy Ridley saying wow multiple times in succession. Then displays containing the first edition wave were popping up in Walmarts and Targets prematurely with figures being register locked if I remember correctly. But the only info I remember hearing from Hasbro about them was from a third party who said Hasbro said that the supply of the first editions would be extremely limited and there would not be another release of them only on Force Friday. But I also heard contradictory information regarding those two things also. However, very close to Force Friday, I think some of them may have been pictured on flyers for Walmart and Target potentially, but neither Walmart nor Target had any idea about what they were or when they were going to be released or anything when you tried to talk to them or called about it. So I tried a bunch of Targets and Walmarts on Force Friday. Did I find any? No. The only ones I found were at GameStops unexpectedly. Each GameStop near me received one random first edition each. So that's what I ended up with, but it turned out that the Disney store 
Gryffindor was your best bet for the first editions as they got stacks of them and had I known that would have been an option I would probably have the first edition Mando right now. More first edition cases that were late to the party starting hitting retailers three weeks after Force Friday but I'd stopped looking by then. And then there was the cruel joke that Entertainment Earth played on everyone where the entire first edition wave was available for pre-order a month and a half later only to have all those pre-orders cancelled a short time after that. So anyway that's the list. What do you guys think? What other figures should have been on here? I'd love to hear which figures were hard to find in your part of the country. Did you have a hard time finding any of these? What happened? Let me know in the comments. Which of these were easy for you to find? I wish I had your luck. I could possibly make an entire second list on this subject, but these were the ones that came to mind that I thought I should discuss. Also, I wanted to mention again that I'm planning on doing some live streams soon so I can communicate with you guys and we can have an actual discussion about things, which I thought would be pretty cool. Maybe one every week, I don't know. Maybe some memberships or something like that. If you have any ideas for future video topics, I'd love to hear them. And thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and happy hunting out there.